and you would want to have these things kind of positioned around the mask uh, and really bake the thing. They pop <laughs> Everybody, this is Praxis and if you're watching this video you either did a search for how to clean an N95 mask or you watched an earlier video of mine about that very same topic. Uh, in the other video I was addressing how to clean an N95 mask for the purpose of being in a dust, debris, and ash environment. I made that back when there were a lot of wildfires in California and there were a lot of people with plugged up masks and I wanted to help people with an easy technique that just use tools that people had access to, which was running water through the masks, uh, to try to flush the masks out so they could get more life out of them. Using that technique for virus protection is a really bad idea because you are creating a wet, moist environment in your mask, which is pretty good for the virus, not the technique that you would want to use for an environment where you have a live, active, dangerous virus on a mask. I get a lot of angry comments on that video with people uh, you know, saying, oh, you know, this wouldn't work for virus, and they were very upset they want like a one shot magic bullet for you know that will handle any environment it's amazing praxis prepper here for billy mays for easy prep did you forget to stock your pantry before the apocalypse it's not a problem with easy prep maybe you were sent a letter with some weaponized anthrax you can eliminate that anthrax with the power of easy prep and what about a foreign military incursion it's no problem with easy prep that's just silly. If you're in an environment, uh, in an emergency situation, and you know, you're trying to do the best you can with what you have, depending on what that emergency is, there are different uh, you know, approaches that you can use. If you do want a magic bullet, there is one, and it's called prepping. If you had stocked up a bunch of masks ahead of time, just having a lot of masks will solve your problem, whether it's dust or ash or virus or whatever. But for this video, we're uh, presuming that people have missed the boat on that one. You know, they didn't stock up ahead of time. And now you're in a situation where you don't have as many of these as you would like and you want some way to clean them, uh, sanitize them, make them so that you can stretch their use longer than you, you know, would otherwise. Now, I do have an answer to that, uh, though I will say that it's not, a, uh, these aren't things that I've personally tested myself. They're just logic and research that I've done. Uh, you know, I'm, I'll just be totally honest about it. I have never had a day where I thought to myself, geez, I'd really like to infect this mask with virus and then try to clean it and then put it on and see if I get sick. I just, you know, there hasn't been a week where I'm like, yeah, I got nothing else going on this week. I'd like to give that a try. So I have not done a personal experiment with this myself, but I am uh, gonna be sharing with you uh, te techniques and tricks and information that I've picked up through research. And again, just common sense. Now, again, common sense suggests that uh, if you are in a virus environment, you you don't want to be making your mask moist. That's a good environment for uh, especially the coronavirus seems to last longer on cool, moist surfaces. You don't want your mask being cool and moist. The best thing that you can do, and I would suggest if you have any means to do this, uh, this would be the, the top technique if you can't get a ton of masks, if you can just get yourself a week's worth of masks, a week's worth of masks for each person in your home, and you can take the mask and kind of rotate them. Uh, coronavirus seems to like it uh, will last on a surface for up to five days, maybe even longer than that. The information's still developing, uh, you know, at the time of this video's recording. But a great way of killing the virus is to just let it die on its own. I love it when I can use mother nature to do my work for me. And if you take a mask and you put it in maybe an environment that's not cool, in an environment that's not moist, put it in a dry, kind of warm environment and let it just sit there for five days, the viruses are gonna just, they won't have a host, they're gonna die on their own. That said, you may wanna speed the process up and you may want a little extra insurance. And there are some things you can do to try to help to clean your mask off, uh, you know, in addition to just letting mother nature do her job. One of them, and I would say my top suggestion, would be UV light. Uh, now these are UV lights that are used for sterilizing shoes. Uh, I, I use them for my boots in the winter so I don't get athlete's foot. These have very intense lamps in them. There is UV sterilization equipment and that would be what you would need to get. At the time of this video recording, there are not a ton of people going out there trying to buy that kind of stuff. So there's not a run on it. If you realize that you missed the boat on stocking up on masks and you don't want to miss the next boat, you may want to get some UV sterilization equipment. There's a link down in the uh, video description below if you want to pick something up. Again, you know, the prices are normal now. There's not a run on this stuff yet. So if you would like that, you could get, take, uh, you know, a couple of these. And again, 
it has to be sterilization equipment. You can't just get like a full spectrum aquarium uh, light or you know some kind of like a UV flashlight or something like that and expect that for that to work. You wanna buy something that has warnings all over it that you shouldn't look at the light while it's on. It's really intense, that's what you're looking for. And you would wanna have these things kind of positioned around the mask uh, and really bake the thing. Maybe possibly even put it in kind of like a reflective dome, like, a, like a, a, a shiny mixing bowl or something to really get the light all banging back into the mask. You really want this stuff to, uh, you know, to bake your mask and kill or inactivate anything that is in there. Right, so I've been editing the video that you're watching right now, and as I was putting it together, I realized that there was something really, really important that I didn't directly mention, and it seems kind of common sense to me, but I feel it's so important, I wanted to mention it really overtly, and that's the idea of having zones. If you're in your house and you want to keep your house clean, and, and I don't mean, you know, from dust, debris, and toys on the floor, but, you know, from virus or contamination, and you're uh, coming in from the outside where you're fearing that you might be bringing contamination in with you, you need to divide your house's areas up into the idea of zones where there are going to be some zones in your house or outside your house if you can create a temporary structure or something like that where they're going to be considered kind of hot zones and you're going to need to think about that and have um, control over those areas and not have things crisscrossing and cross-contaminating. When you bring a mask in and you're going to be uh, uh, cleaning it, you have to consider that to be a dangerous item, that is a hot item, and you need, wherever you put that down, the area that you're putting that down in itself has to be considered a hot area, a dangerous area, and you need to make sure that things are not moving from one area to the other until, until they themselves have been cleaned and sanitized. You can do that with a cloth and bleach and water. Uh, this is something that's really handy. I just bought a bunch of these. These are just uh, quick, easy bleach wipes I'm going to be, uh, when, when I travel, in addition to, or possibly uh, instead of using hand sanitizer, I'm thinking about starting to use these when I get back into my car after, after I've been in a public place to clean up my hands, clean up the steering wheel, anything that I might uh, fear could have some contamination that'll give me the peace of mind that I've, you know, I've stepped out of the hot environment and now I've created a kind of a, well, a cool environment, if you will. Um, uh, so. Again, if you're bringing things back into your house, you have to consider not only those items as being possibly contaminated, but anything that they touch, and you need to treat those areas with the degree of respect that they merit, uh, and make sure that you are not just willy-nilly moving things to and fro. That's it, let's go back to the rest of the video. Uh, if you don't have UV uh, sterilization equipment, there are still other things that you can do. One of them is that you could uh, use alcohol. You could run alcohol through the mask. Now, I'm gonna, say if you run alcohol through your mask you want to start it from the inside have it go out through your mask you don't want to be washing things deeper into it and you would only want to do that if you were in a position where you can get this thing dry really quickly you don't want it kind of uh, packing together uh, in the other video I talked about like dust and ash uh, a sort of um, a situation you know if you're washing uh, water through a mask and it gets a little structural damage that's not a huge deal uh, when it comes to dust and ash because the particles are so big viruses are much smaller and structural damage that you do to your uh, to your mask could be problematic for you but if you're in a situation where it's either a dirty mask cleaned or no mask at all you know you got to take what you can get again the absolute best thing you could do would have been to have stocked up on these a while ago, but we're starting from the position that we didn't do that and we need to find some way of getting these things at least a little more functional. Another thing that you can do, very easy to get, is bleach, is to run bleach through these. Again, uh, you don't want to put pure bleach through when you want to run it through quickly and you want to dry it out as quickly as possible. There would be bleach and water mixed uh, that you would do in here, but the key is run it through kill what's in there and then get this thing dry. If you have a dehumidifier running, set it in front of that, set it in front of a, like a, a window with a fan blowing across it. Uh, right now where I'm recording this, it's winter. You know, you're not gonna put it outside on a, a line to dry, but if you live in an area where it's warm, sunny and dry, you could line dry something like this and just you want to get it dry as quickly as possible. And the last thing I would wanna share with you guys is that an N95 mask is not you should not consider the, the idea that you take one of these, you put it on your face, and then suddenly you're safe. This is one line in de of defense in a number of different lines of defense that you need to uh, implement. You know, some of them are your uh, physical practices of, you know, are you, you know, are you planning on going out into an area that has a lot of sick people? 
Maybe you want to rethink that. Maybe you want to, you know, uh, you know, play it a little closer to home for a while, play it a little safe. One of the issues with coronavirus is that people are, cont uh, are contagious or can be contagious, I'm sorry, can be con contagious with no symptoms whatsoever or very mild symptoms. That's the real uh, problem with this virus and containing it is the, the fact that people can spread it without even knowing that they have it. So, you know, are you planning on going out into a big public place uh, you know, where there might be a lot of con uh, possible cross-contamination, uh, you know, maybe you want to rethink that. I'm not saying, you know, be a hermit and never go out into public again, but, you know, if you can limit your, uh, uh, your travel and your trips uh, at the moment, kind of play it as like a wait and see kind of thing. Uh, if something's not super important, then, you know, why not no, not play it a little safe? If you do go out into public, keep in mind the idea of not touching your face. You know, you if you open up a uh, public door, you should consider your hands to not be the kind of thing you want to put on your face anymore. Uh, you want to be practicing washing, ideally with soap and water. You can do that out in a public space. You know, you got to be careful going into bathrooms, you know, use your elbow as much as you can. But using soap and water is the best way to get virus off of your hands. There is also hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer is kind of something that you want to use if you don't have access to soap and water. Uh, but it can be Better, much far, uh, much more effective than doing nothing at all. If you do use hand sanitizer, you want to make sure that you put enough on your hands that you will keep them wet for about 20 or 30 seconds while you rub your hands together. It's the physical action and the duration of what you're doing as much as just the uh, the presence of the alcohol that is the active uh, sort of uh, you know a magic bullet, if you will, in terms of de destroying the virus. If you are going to be choosing uh, some type of hand sanitizer, you want you want something that's at least 60% alcohol. Uh, they they come in various intensities. This one's 65. I see uh, I see a lot of um, you know 70% alcohol. You want something higher than 60% alcohol. But really, it's all about making smart decisions. Everybody is doing a run for these right now because it's iconic, it's simple, they used to be cheap, uh, but there are so many things that you can do. And even if you don't have any of these, there is still so much you can do to try to modify your behavior, modify your life for a little while to keep you and keep your family safe. So good luck out there. Make smart, logical decisions. You know, do research. Don't just look at this video and think you're done with it. There are a lot of other great uh, information sources out there. I'll put some links down in the video description below to some other uh, YouTube channels that I think are doing really good work on this, uh, spreading, uh, you know, uh, fact-checked information that seems uh, highly credible. Uh, and, uh, you know, you just have to do the best you can with the information you have at the time. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.